Yo, 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 what's up, guys? We're back in After Effects again, and today I'm extra hyped because I'm gonna show you some brand new effects along with my latest pack, the Opium Pack. I'll be teaching you a few sick effects straight from the pack, just in case you're not ready to grab it yet or it's not in your budget right now. So if you're ready, let's jump right into the effects. All right, guys, let's jump right into the project. I've got a few clips here from Trippy Red music video. And first thing we're gonna do is grab the roto brush and start masking our artist because I wanna add an effect right on top of him. Once we finish the roto cleanly, we can tweak the feather and shift edge settings a bit to soften the edges. Then I'll duplicate the layer, delete the roto brush from the one below and rename the top one to roto just to keep things organized. Now, let me show you a few effects from the opium pack real quick. Let's add an adjustment layer and open up the pack. Here's Etch, an effect I'll show you in detail later on. We've got Glitcher, looks insane with those broken distortion vibes. Then Hiroshima, it literally feels like an explosion just went off. Scramble, one of my personal favorites, I love this one. And some Venom effects too, which hit perfectly in dark scenes. I used a bunch of these effects myself to create the visuals you're seeing in this video. The pack's full of original and realistic textures. Seriously, a lot of work went into this one. You can take a basic shot and make it look next level in seconds. Just drop any effect from the pack onto an adjustment layer and boom! Realistic, cinematic results instantly. Faster edits mean more time saved and more time means more money, right? That's exactly what this pack is made for, to speed up your workflow and level up your visuals. I use it all the time and honestly, it's made my life so much easier. If you're interested in checking it out, the link's down below in the description. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, now let's open it up. I'll just delete that extra layer, then select our roto layer and from Sapphire choose S etching. We're gonna add that effect right on top. Using the line's frequency value, we can control the particle size, make them bigger or smaller in the scene. I'll set mine to around 25. Now inside lines one angle, we can rotate those inner particles. I'm gonna add a keyframe at the start and by the end, push it to around 160 so we get that rotating energy inside the character. It already looks fire. Next, with lines at width, we can bring in some brightness and contrast just to give it a lighter, more glowy look. So I'll drop a keyframe around 1200 at the beginning, then move forward a bit and lower it to around 300 to brighten the particles. That gives us a nice smooth transition. Next, let's select all the keyframes and press F9 to smooth them out. Now let's add some glow. Bring the brightness down just a bit and play around with the threshold until it feels right. And there we go, that's our glowing transition effect. Then we'll duplicate the roto layer, remove all the effects except the roto brush. To blend the transition, we'll apply luma key to it. Add a keyframe to the threshold, start from the beginning, then raise it up to around 255 after a few frames. Also, increase the feather a bit to soften the edges. And just like that, we've got a super smooth transition from normal to effect. Don't forget to hit F9 again for that easy ease motion. Now I'm gonna tweak the etching effect a bit. I think the particles were a little too small so I'll bump it up to around 50. I was thinking about keeping that rotation, but I'll turn it off this time. We'll keep it nice and clean. After shifting a few keyframes for smoother flow, it looks absolutely crazy good right now. As you can see guys, to take it even further, we'll duplicate both Roto1 and Roto2 layers, pull them up to the top to stay organized, select them both and move the character slightly to the left. Now we've got two characters, giving the whole scene an even more dynamic and powerful vibe. Alright, time for the final touch. I'm gonna add an adjustment layer and from the pack drop on the Venom 2 effect and boom! Just like that, the whole scene blends together way smoother, giving us a much more realistic and cinematic look. You can literally see the difference yourself. This is why I love this pack so much. We achieved this whole look with just two layers. That's it. Alright, if you're ready, let's move on to the next scenes. Let's create another adjustment layer and drop in the S flicker effect. I'll set the amplitude to 1. Hmm, that's a bit too soft. Let's try 2. Yep, that's perfect. We've got that nice, punchy, flashing effect I wanted. Next, 
we're gonna add levels. I'll tweak the input black and gamma just a bit to get a darker, more contrasty look. Of course, these settings might vary depending on your scene, but if you keep them around these values, you'll be good to go. Now let's add tritone so we can really shape the color tone. As you can see, the midtones are brown by default. Let's change them to white, like the highlights. And yeah, that's way too bright. The face almost disappears. So let's go back to levels and fine tune it a bit more. Perfect. Now we've got that cinematic, clean look we were aiming for. Finally, we'll add some glow to finish it off and give it that extra pop. We'll lower the brightness and threshold just a touch and then increase the glow width slightly. And there we go. All right, guys, now let's add some ad grain. As you can see, it's currently in preview mode, so just click on it and switch to final output. Now the grain covers the whole frame. I'll bring down the intensity a little bit and give it a touch of softness too. Then head over to color and drop the saturation all the way down to zero. And that's it. Now I'm gonna show you an extra effect. Something you can add if you want to spice things up a bit. Go up here and grab the rectangle mask tool, then draw a box roughly the size of your subject's head. That's gonna give us a shape layer. Open it up, turn off the fill, then enable stroke and set the color to red, or any color you want. Set the thickness to around 4. Next, add a glow effect to make it pop. Now, to make it follow the subject's head, we'll add keyframes to the position and move it frame by frame so it tracks the head movement nicely. You'll notice the head looks a bit bigger now, so we can open up scale and add a slight increase to match it better. You can even place this layer underneath if you want it black and white, or keep it red for a more stylized look. And finally, yeah, I'm not gonna use this one for today's edit, just wanted to show you how it's done. Alright, now for the final effect from the pack. The Opium Transition. Let's create a new layer for this one. Then open up the pack and choose VHC Transition 0. Double click it. And boom, as you can see, our transition is instantly ready to go. It already comes with a bunch of keyframes built in, so we'll just trim off the extra parts of the layer, place it right between our two scenes, and duplicate it to use on the next one too. I'll stretch the end a little bit so the effect lasts longer. And that's it. Literally just two clicks. Damn, that looks amazing. I love this transition. Let's drop one more right here too. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you had fun and picked up some new tricks along the way. If you liked the pack, the link's down below in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.